All of the circle shapes under this black area are blue. Now to see if this statement is actually true, what I can do is actually remove this black shape and see what's underneath it. The black shape has been removed and we can see that all of the circles are blue. Consequently, this statement is proved to be correct. All of the circle shapes under this are red. The black rectangular shape has been removed and if we look at the actual shapes we can see that in fact they're not all red. We found one that's actually green as you can see here. Consequently this particular statement here is not correct and the reason it's not correct we found a contradiction. We found that they're not all red because we found this green one here. In the last video we showed that the square root of 2 was not a natural whole or integer number. I made the statement that it was not a rational number and said it was an irrational number. This video is going to forward a proof that shows that the square root of 2 is indeed not a rational number and therefore an irrational number. And we're going to achieve this by actually making a statement right at the very beginning that the square root of 2 is a rational number and then we're going to try and show why it can't possibly be a rational number and therefore must be an irrational number. And we're going to do this through um, a mathematical approach called contradiction, proof by contradiction. Now this is kind of similar to what we've just done with the shapes, the circles, where we said at the beginning they're a particular colour, they're all the same colour, and we found an instance where they were not the same colour. Now this is only an analogy, don't take it too far, but it's just to give you a feel for what contradiction actually meant. What we did, we said, look, underneath here, everything is red, and then we found, in fact, there was something that was green. So the statement we originally made was incorrect. And that's what we're going to try and do here. We're going to say that the square root of 2 is rational and then show why it couldn't possibly be a rational number. And therefore, by contradiction, we will show that it is an irrational number. We've already shown in the previous video with the number line that it was not a natural whole or an integer number. So if I now show that it is not a rational number, then it is an irrational number. First of all, let's remind ourselves what a rational number is. Here you can see I've got 0 0.5, which can be expressed as 4 over 8, which can be reduced to 2 over 4, which can be further reduced to 1 over 2. Now when we have 1 over 2, we know that this is in its lowest terms. In other words, there are no more factors that allows us to reduce this any further. You see, when we had this one, we had a factor of 2, to allow us to come to this particular lowest term here. That is, we were able to divide the top and the bottom by 2 to allow us to reduce it to 1 over 2. You see, the 2 would be divided by 2 to give 1, and the 4 would be divided by 2 to give 2. So you can see 0 0.5 can be represented by a ratio of integers, as you see here, the 1 over the 2. And of course, I've ensured that I've done the representation in the lowest terms possible. Let's assume that the square root of 2 is rational. Therefore, we can write the square root of 2 equals p over q, where p is an integer, q is an integer, and the ratio of p to q is in the lowest possible terms, i.e. they have no factors. We also assume that q is not equal to 0, because p divided by 0 is not a number i.e. it is not defined. The square root of 2 is approximately 1.414, which is positive. Therefore, we will assume p and q are positive. We will ignore minus divided by a minus gives you a plus. Consider the following. 2 squared is 2 times 2, which is 4. 3 squared is 3 times 3, which is 9. 4 squared is 4 times 4, which is 16. 5 squared is 5 times 5, which is 25. If we look at this result, the 4 and the 16, we can see that 2 will divide them exactly. If we look at the 9 and the 25, they cannot be divided exactly by 2, i.e. you'll get a fractional result. 
if we look at what was divided exactly by 2, we can see that the 2 and the 4, which were both raised to the power of 2, were even. Therefore, if y squared can be divided exactly by 2, we can say that y is even. Because if it was odd, it would not be divided exactly by 2. It would give a fractional result. So, what we've done here, we have shown that if you have something raised to a power of 2 that can be divided by 2, then that something raised to the power of 2 must be an even number. Before we continue with the proof, consider the following. Let's consider R, and let's say that it belongs to the uh, natural numbers. And what I mean by that, that we have 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on. Um, and we can now say, well, let R equal 1. Now, if R equals 1, what we can say is 2 times R, 2R, is obviously going to be equal to 2 times 1, which is clearly 2. If I now let R equal 2, therefore 2R will equal 2 times 2, which is clearly going to be 4. If I now let R equal 3, and have a look at what 2R actually is, then obviously it's going to be 2 times 3, which is clearly going to be 6. I'll do one more. Let's say R is 4. Therefore, 2R is obviously going to be equal to 2 times 4, which is clearly going to be 8. If we now look at these results here, we should clearly see that they're all actually even. So we can see they're even. Therefore, what we can end up saying is that if R actually belongs to the natural number set, then 2R will always be even. We're going to find this useful for our proof in a moment. Let's just quickly recap. What we're actually saying, we're going to assume that the square root of 2 is a rational number, which means it can be expressed as a ratio. And this ratio is going to be P over Q. Furthermore, we know that Q cannot be equal to 0, because that gives us something that's undefined. Also, we've discounted positives, so that means that we can have P and Q both belonging to the natural number set. Now all that means is that P and Q can either be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. We're not saying they can be negative 1, negative 2. And we're also saying they cannot um, be 0, or Q definitely cannot be 0. So in saying P and Q are all of the natural numbers, so we can have these ratios P and Q, such as 1 over 2, 1 over 3, 7 over 2, etc. We're also going to assume that this ratio here is going to be in its lowest common terms, i.e. there's no common factor between the P and Q. We've also shown if we take any natural number Y and square that, and if that can then be divided by 2 exactly, then we can say that Y is actually even. We've also shown if R is actually a natural number, then we know that 2R is going to be even. Now, these assumptions we've made here and these two observations are going to help us with the proof in a moment. Right, let's start off with this. We're going to start off with this assumption here that the square root of 2 is equal to the ratio of P divided by Q. What I'm going to do, I'm going to multiply both sides of the equation by Q. So this here will be the square root of 2 multiplied by Q. And of course, that's going to equal just P on the other side, because if I multiply 
P divided by Q by Q, then obviously I'll end up with P. Now what I'm going to do, I'm going to square this side to get rid of the square root sign. And because I've squared that side, I've obviously got to square this side. So now I will have the square root of 2 squared is obviously 2. Q squared is Q squared equal to P squared. Now we should be able to see that this side here is 2Q squared. So this can actually be divided by 2. Now if this can be divided by 2, then clearly the other side here must also be able to be divided by 2. Now we have already shown that anything squared that can be divided by 2 means the thing being squared is even. Therefore here we're able to say that P is even. Okay, now let's take this equation here and let's write it out up here so we can continue with the proof. So I've got 2Q squared equals P squared. And we've already shown that P is actually even. Now if P is even, what I'm allowed to do here, I can say, well, let P equal 2R. Because if you remember from previous work, we've shown that 2R is even. So I'm going to say, right, well, I'm going to get a number R. If I multiply it by 2, I've got an even number. So I'm going to say, well, let P equal 2 lots of R. So in other words, R is half of P, isn't it? And we don't know what P is. We're just using symbols here. What I'm therefore going to do now is to say, well, 2Q squared equals, and I'm going to replace the P with the 2R. And of course, that's going to be squared. So we can write this out again as 2Q squared equals. Now, obviously, I've got 2R squared, and 2 squared is going to be 4, and R squared is obviously R squared. And I can see that both sides of the equation can be divided by 2. So if I now look at this, that will reduce to 1. So that will become Q squared here equals. And obviously 2 will go into itself once. It will go into 4 twice. So here we'll have 2R squared. Now we're in a similar position to where we were before. Because if you look here, this is 2R squared. Now, if it's 2R squared, then clearly it means it can be divided by 2. If I can divide this side of the equation by 2, then it must mean that I can divide the other side of the equation by the same value of 2. So if we look what we've just done, we're saying that Q squared can be divided by 2. And we've already shown that anything squared divided by 2 means the thing being squared is even. Therefore, we can write here that Q is even. Based on the assumption we made right at the very beginning of this proof, we have just shown that P and Q are even. If P and Q are both even, then they at least share a factor of 2. Now this is a contradiction, because if you remember, we set off up here saying that the square root of 2 equals P over Q, and P and Q were in the lowest common terms, and P and Q had no common factors. Now we've shown here that they have at least a common factor of 2. So by contradiction, we've shown that this original assumption here does not hold. And the assumption was that the square root of 2 was a rational number, and we have shown by contradiction that it is indeed not a rational number, therefore it is an irrational number. Check out the supporting website for these videos and also consider subscribing to the YouTube channel and get an automatic update every time I upload a new video. Also consider subscribing to the Google Plus Circle that relates to these videos.